hello students i welcome you all in this video i am going to explain questions came on ir spectroscopy topic during 10 years that is from 2013 to 2022 in gate chemistry examination to begin with the question number 50 which came in the year of 2022 the correct statement regarding the three normal modes of vibration of sulfur trioxide there are three vibrational modes of sulfur trioxide 1 2 and 3 are given and based on these three normal modes of vibration of sulfur trioxide there are four statements a b c and d now we have to identify the correct statements structure 1 of sulfur trioxide represents the symmetrical stretching as we investigate the structure 1 it is clear that all the three bonds are increasing in bond length now sulfur trioxide is a non polar molecule and it has dipole moment 0 now after symmetrical stretching also the dipole moment of sulfur trioxide remains zero hence there is no net change in dipole moment during vibrational symmetrical stretching therefore one is ir inactive hence a option can't be the answer now let us focus on structure 2 and 3 Two is out of plane bending, which is related to the change in the bond angle, keeping constant bond length. And three is the anti-symmetric stretching of sulfur trioxide, where all the bonds are not increasing at a time or decreasing at a time. Now, after anti-symmetric stretching, dipole moment of sulfur trioxide is not zero. it is not like symmetrical stretching of sulfur trioxide which i have discussed earlier symmetrical stretching of sulfur trioxide leads to the no change in the dipole moment previously also dipole moment is zero after symmetrical stretching of sulfur trioxide also dipole moment is zero but in case of anti symmetric stretching of sulfur trioxide initially dipole moment is zero but after anti symmetric stretching of those three bonds the dipole moment of sulfur trioxide is not zero hence there is net change in the dipole moment and structure 3 is ir active now based on this fact what is the fact structure 3 is ir active options c and d are not the answers already we have cancelled option a and now i have cancelled c and d so therefore answer is b in this regard i would like to mention selection rule of ir based on dipole moment of molecule a molecule will absorb ir and give peak if vibrational excitation is associated with change in dipole moment and that peak is considered as ir active now vibrations on the contrary not associated with change in the dipole moment they are considered as ir inactive they do not lead to any peak in ir now let us move to the next question which appeared in the gate chemistry exam in the year of 2021 the question number 18 now this question came and under the subheading of multiple select question means the msq so in this question the answer may be more than one so what is the question the question is the normal modes of vibration of water there are four structures are given they are named as a b c d and we have to identify out of these four a b c d how many are representing the normal mode of vibration related to water now in order to understand all the pictorial representations of 
normal mode of vibrations of water let us first discuss about the theory or the knowledge required to answer this now we know that ir deals with the change in the vibrations of the molecule means ir interacts with the light for the vibrational excitation now vibrations are of two types we know one is stretching and another one is the bending now there are two types of stretchings are there stretching is related to the change in the bond length whereas the bending is related to the change in the bond angle keeping constant the bond length there are two types of stretchings and the two types of bendings are possible now asymmetric stretching or anti symmetric stretching and symmetric stretching these are the two types of stretchings and coming to the bending the bending are of two types one is called as the in plane bending another one is called as the out of plane bending this out of plane bending is popularly known as oop bending also now in plane bending in its turn are divided into two categories one is rocking and scissoring out of plane bending also are divided into two categories one is twisting and dragging so now let us consider the four figures a b c and d figure a represents the symmetrical stretching of water whereas figure c represents the anti symmetric or asymmetric um, stretching of water now what about the figure b and d figure b and d are related to the bending not related to stretching now as we know the bendings are of two types in plane bending and the out of the plane bending whether it is figure b or d they are something related to the in plane bending now the figure b represents correctly the in plane bending because if we investigate the figure b then it is clear that if two hydrogens of water come close then oxygen should go up which is presented in figure b now coming to the figure d here if the two hydrogens of water molecule goes up then oxygen should not go up it should come down but figure d represents hydrogen and oxygen all together the three atoms are moving up which is not possible so therefore the correct answer is a b c and no need to include d now coming to the next question that is get 2021 chemistry and this question number 49 it was asked to calculate the force constant of hi some information was provided that is a vib fundamental vibrational frequency of hi is 2309 cm inverse and it was asked in that problem to calculate the force constant in a newton per meter in addition with that it was also provided the avogadro number 6.023 into 10 to the power 23 along with the velocity of light 3 into 10 to the power of 8 meter per second now in order to calculate the force constant we need to know hooke's law which represents nu bar is equal to 1 by 2 pi c under root of k by mu now nu bar which is in the left hand side of this equation represents the frequency of vibration in centimeter inverse which is 2309 centimeter inverse in this particular problem now coming to the right hand side where c represents the velocity of light if it is in the meter then it will be 3 into 10 to the power of 8 meter per second if it is in centimeter then 3 into 10 to the power of 10 centimeter per second now coming to the k k is the force constant we have to calculate in this problem and mu is known as reduced mass formula of reduced mass is equal to m1 into m2 divided by m1 plus m2 where m1 and m2 represents the mass of the two atoms here the two atoms are um, hydrogen and the iron So as because we have to calculate force constant k and in original Hooke's law it is under root, so we have to square both the sides. After doing and we are coming to one equation where force constant k is equal to four pi square c square nu bar square into reduced mass mu. 
Now by putting all the things in this equation, all the right hand side terms are known means pi is equal to 3.14, c is equal to 3 into 10 to the power of 10 centimeter per second, nu bar is equal to 2309 centimeter inverse and mu reduced mass is equal to m1 into m2 divided by m1 plus m2 that is if we calculate m1 is equal to mass of one hydrogen atom and m2 is equal to mass of iodine atom. Now how to calculate the mass of one hydrogen atom that we have to um, take the gram atomic weight of hydrogen and iodine and we have to divide it by the Avogadro number. So if we put all these things finally it is coming as 127 divided by 128 into 1 by 9. Now n value is 6.023 into 10 to the power of 23. So in the equation it is coming at a denominator. Now if we put it into the numerator then finally the reduced mass of Hi it is coming 127 into 1.67 into 10 to the power of minus 24 divided by 128 gram. Now putting this in this equation we we have k is equal to 4 into 3.14 square into 3 into 10 to the power of 10 whole square into 2309 whole square into 127 into 1.66 into 10 to the power of minus 24 divided by 128. Now if we calculate all these things the k value it is coming 311681.8. Now let us concentrate on the units. Now after considering all the units in the above equation it is coming that in numerator we have centimeter square, centimeter to the power of minus 2 gram divided by second square. Now we know that gram centimeter divided by second square is called as one dyne and the dyne is the unit of force. So after calculating and assembling, finally what we are getting the k value is the 311681.8 dyne centimeter inverse. This is the correct answer but in the given question they are not asking to calculate a k value in dyne per centimeter. They are asking to report force constant of Hi in Newton per meter. So, in this case we have to little adjust the dyne per centimeter how to convert it into Newton per meter. Now, this dyne per centimeter it is the CGS unit whereas the SI unit of force is the Newton and 1 Newton is equal to 10 to the power of 5 dyne. So therefore, if we assemble all these things, it will come that k value is equal to 3.12 Newton per centimeter. Now the remaining part is just the conversion of the centimeter inverse into meter, into meter inverse by multiplying 3.12 by 100. So therefore, our final answer is a 312 Newton per meter. Now in this regard I would like to mention that usually from the meter if we try to convert it into the centimeter we multiply that by 10 uh, square but in this case we are handling the reciprocal of centimeter and the reciprocal of the meter so to convert centimeter inverse to meter inverse we have to multiply by 10 square. Now coming to the gate 2020 chemistry question number 29. Now in this question they have given one compound of formula C10H12O2 and that molecule showed a strong IR band at approximately 1720 centimeter inverse. In the mass spectrum it shows one peak at M by Z122 and in addition with this that HNMR information is also there and based on IR NMR and mass information they are asking us to identify the structure relevant to all this information. Four structures are given A, B, C, D. Now in order to identify which is the correct answer 
only IR knowledge is enough. No need to apply mass or the HNM are given. Now let us proceed. How to take the help of only IR data which is a strong peak at 1720 cm inverse. Now if we investigate the given structures A, B, C, D then it is clear that A and the D should show the strong peak due to OH because A contains carboxylic acid and D is one phenol. So as because there is no information in the given problem that the compound shows a broad peak for OH, we can cancel A and D. So now it is clear that either the answer will be B or C. Now if we investigate the functional group present in the structure B or structure C, it is clear that both are esters. Now usually the ester C double bond O appears at 1740 to 1750 cm inverse. But in the given problem, the value given for the C double bond O stretching frequency is 1720, which is little low than expected ester C double bond O. Now, this low value is due to the conjugation because we know in IR, new bar in centimeter inverse is inversely proportional to the conjugation means if the conjugation increases, new bar decreases. Now, if we keeping it in the mind, if we investigate the structure B and structure C, then it is clear that in structure B, C double bond O of ester is in conjugation with the benzene ring. Whereas in case of the C, the C double bond O is isolated. So, therefore, our final answer is B not C.